Just um, hold it. it I'm, uh, yeah, I'm, it's a it's a movie now. Okay. Okay. Um. All right, here we go. Hey everybody, I'm <laughs> back in Beijing. <laughs> She's laughing. Hey everybody, I'm back in Beijing, China. This is my new hostel. Can you get a um, a video view here? Ah. Uh. I am a warrior. I am a warrior. This place is 600 years old, and I've been doing my laundry today and hanging it in the tree. Here's my underwear. <laughs> yes, I wear jungle underwear because I run through the jungles of China for Jesus. So praise God, I'm doing my laundry today and the sink in there. And, um, well, it's in here. This is my room. This is where I sleep. And you can see my lamb. Wow. Oh, the lamb. So cute. <laughs> is, is chilling out today. And I did not put a dusk mask on him uh, because the sky is blue today. Very beautiful. Now, the last city I was in was very smoggy. So we had to wear a dusk, uh, you know, a mask over your face because I got sick my uh, first few days here going to the Great Wall of China. I came down my nose dripping and got under attack. I was in bed for days, lots of drama there. But as soon as I got out of bed, I started carrying my cross for Jesus, cross China. And that's what I wanted to talk to you about today is not just that I hang my underwear in the tree uh, to dry like a warrior should, uh, but that, uh, yes, I've taken some risk for God today, uh, since I've been in China. I have carried the cross successfully um, through uh, the Beijing uh, train station and um, in front of many police. Matter of fact, I talked to a police officer yesterday while I was holding my cross. Let me go get that one moment. Let me go get my cross. I'll be right back. The warrior must go in. Okay. Okay. All right, I'm coming back, I'm coming back. All right, here we go. Hat is falling off. I've always wanted to wear a hat like this because my uncle was in the Army uh, of America and, and the Vietnam War as an Army chaplain. And when I was growing up, my uncle, I sat by him at uh, Red Bank Baptist Church. So, um, you know, you are what you hang out with. So I sat by a preacher for years and ended up being one. Hallelujah. Okay, so this says Yesu. Mm -hmm. says Jesus in uh, Chinese. And I've, I've carried it, uh, like I said, thousands and thousands of people have seen this cross because it was so packed in the train station. The, the two places I was at, uh, two different cities. So many, many people... I uh, have seen the cross, and uh, I love when people say Yesu, Yesu. So um, I learned how to say Jesus loves you in Chinese, so I told many, many people, yes, Yesu, Yesu Aini, Yesu Aini, Yesu Aini. So, uh, you know, that's not the whole gospel that Jesus loves you, but it's all I got, folks. It's all I got. And the last city I was in, I do believe I was the only white person in the whole uh, region. So children, uh, I heard click, 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 click. And they were taking their, my picture when I wasn't looking. So um, I decided that day to wear my Jesus t-shirt to the wedding. I got a bug on me, hang on. The bug is attacking the warrior. Okay. <laughs> So I decided that day on purpose to wear a Jesus t-shirt to the wedding because of all the people that would be there. I didn't take the cross, but I wore my Jesus t-shirt. 
Because I knew people would want my photos, so when they'd read my shirt, they would see, trust Jesus. Okay, so, um, and then I, I told the children, yeah, let's get a photo, and, and they loved that. So I, I got my photo with many people, and my brother that lives here as well, he's, uh, he's black from Africa. Hallelujah, Arnold, my new Christian friend, and he, he let me go to underground church with him. It was awesome. So uh, he gets his photo a lot too uh, because he's black. So it was it was really cool. Um, anyway, that's what I wanted to share with you is what's going on here. The warrior is getting ready to go back to Hong Kong. I'm going to live in the airport for a few days and preach in uh, a church on Saturday and Sunday. I just decided it was easier to just live in the airport. Okay, everybody. Breaking news. Apparently, it's not okay to hang my underwear on the tree. So, I've been moved up to the upper room. So, I thought I'd show you the roof view up here, very pretty. So these are where my clothes are going to dry. Something pretty cool over there, I don't know what it is. But anyway, I came to China to see the Great Wall of China, share the gospel, go to the wedding, and I feel like um, what I came here for was accomplished. So praise the Lord. I'm not sure I'll ever come to China again, although I have a 10-year visa. It's been hard. Not very many uh, speak English. But I'm glad the cross speaks louder than I can. So when you, um, when you don't know what to do in evangelism, always just lift up a cross with Jesus' name on it. Um, not just a cross, but have Jesus' name in their language on it. It's my best advice to anybody that's traveling. Right now, Arthur Blessed is, uh, he said he's in Europe with the cross going through um, small towns. So he, he really inspired me, and he's, he told me that he carried the cross on the Great Wall of China. Uh, that they didn't really want him to, but they went ahead and allowed him to because he he had um, been the most famous person ever carrying the cross around the world. So that's why they allowed it. But you know, you take a risk in life for the gospel. What better thing to take a risk for? People take a risk with the stock market. Uh, they take a risk on love and get their heart hurt. Why not take a risk for the gospel, for the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords? Why not take a risk for Him? And uh, I'm glad God has given me grace uh, to to be on this journey. And it's going to be a long year ahead. I start the new year in uh, Australia, and then I go to New Zealand. And I still don't know where I'm going after that. I know you can get to America for a little over $300 in February, but I haven't decided where I should go, if I should come back to America or if I should just keep going on the journeys and go into more small islands around there or just come on back and um, uh, be with the fellow Americans. <laughs> right now, I'm not too sure I wanna come back. Um, Everybody just seems so upset about the same-sex marriage, uh, you know. Nobody's talking about that here. Nobody's talking about that here. Strange thing is my roommate last night was from Taiwan. And I, I almost added Taiwan to my schedule because Taiwan just had a uh, hellfire brimstone just uh, rain down fire on a, on a gay party there. And, Many, uh, many, many hundreds of teenagers were hurt, and all day I was singing about Taiwan. I thought about adding it to my schedule, and I'm like, I can't. I'm already going to Hong Kong, Singapore, and then um, uh, three cities in Philippines in July. And I'm like, man, if I add Taiwan, I'm going to be so tired. And then August, I'm back in 
Thailand and Malaysia and then Poland and then uh, then September I uh, well September I go to Poland and Israel but anyway I you know you have to know your limits how much you can do and how much you can't do is there something on my shoulder? The blood of Jesus something just attacked me Ooh. Oh, that's scary. <laughs> oh, you know, I don't know. As I travel so many times, I say blood of Jesus. People hear me say it. I don't, I say it all the time, you know. Um, my pastor used to, Steve Hill used to say that all the time. Just wash me, wash me, wash me, Jesus. And uh, I just picked up a lot of things uh, from him that he would do. But uh, I'm also always singing as I travel. And when I realize I'm singing, sometimes I'll stop um, because I'm like, oh, I, you know, I, what if they don't want to hear me sing? What if they don't think I sing good? But I try to always keep, keep the Lord on my mind and always singing to Him and walk with Him, you know? And the Bible says pray without ceasing. And I believe singing is a part of prayer. And um, usually, 90 something percent of the time people say no that's beautiful keep singing so uh it's that's part of shining for the lord and and um being a christian before other people is letting them see how how we are i think when you're walking with the lord um you don't have to work something up to show somebody uh, that you're a christian you just are walking with the lord doing life and they know they notice, you know, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So if we're really uh, in love with Jesus, we're going to be talking about Jesus and uh, sharing him with other people. I'll never forget living with Rachel um, in Texas. When she fell in love with Josh, uh, she talked about him all the time, every day. Um, and he would come over, he had to see her, and she had to see him, and she would do some of the goofiest things, and everybody would be like, man, he loves her so much, you know? And it's like, yeah, they were made for each other. Now they got three children, and uh, it's just beautiful to watch God bring two people together and then them uh, have children, you know? And, um, I'm excited about going to the Philippines because she was my roommate. She's from the Philippines, Filipino girl. Well, she's from America, but her mom's Filipino. But uh, I always think about her, her romance, you know, watching her from the first time she started liking him all the way to when she was giggling at the altar marrying Josh. You know, they were just both giggly, silly. It was, it was beautiful. But uh, they get married now, they have three kids, and they still love each other very much, very dedicated to one another. I became one, one in spirit. But I think about that with the Lord, you know, how much God uh, wants us to, to love Him and to talk about Him and to long for Him like a bride. You know, Jesus is uh, the bridegroom, and we're the bride, bride of Christ. And Jesus is coming back for a holy bride without spot or wrinkle. And uh, he wants us to long for him and look for his appearing and, and to, to ask him to come, come get us. You know, um, the Jews, when they find their bride, they, they, they then go away and prepare a place for her to prepare for the marriage and, and that's what Jesus did you know he's Jewish he he said I, I'm gonna go away but I prepare a place for you and then I'm gonna come and get you so just be encouraged Saints that uh, he is coming for us and um, for us to be ready be that beautiful bride like Rachel longing for him gazing into his eyes come come Lord Jesus come <laughs> Ah, uh, to be with Jesus forever and ever and ever and ever and ever and ever. You know, some of the things we talk about and worry about are just so pointless when you think about eternity with Christ.